Pepsi to stand for everything's about uh, some new drug that's going to help you out. And they always come uh, with the disclaimers uh, that feature hideous warnings while they're being mumbled. Uh, and they take up about half the ad about the side effects and the possible negative implications of taking this drug on a regular basis. Meanwhile, though, the woman is walking through a field of butterflies. She's blowing <laughs> bubbles, walking a little puppy on a rope because uh, she, she just uh, took two pills and got over lifelong depression. I incredible. But the, the Guardian said, have you seen that? Guardians, I believe it's a diabetes medication. And they got this big fat chick who gets off a train and immediately is leading 25 to 30 people in singing songs about how wonderful <laughs> the effects are of Guardians. <laughs> and I'm thinking the last time I saw a drug like that was when we had Dennis Rodman doing shows at that Bamboo Beach Tiki Bar right on the beach here in Fort Lauderdale. And he was like gargling with Goldschlager. Yes, oh, that's pretty much yes. out of his mind the entire time. <laughs> and and one night he comes on our show, and I've never seen a guy happier in my life. And I thought, whatever drug this guy's on, I want some of that. Yes. I don't know that Jardians gives you that kind of a feeling. Uh, but uh, you, you would assume that it just uh, was a key to happiness, that as soon as you started guzzling a bunch of uh, Jardians pills out of this bottle, that you were going to be happy and your diabetes was going to disappear <laughs> or would get to the point where you just didn't fucking care about possible complications and the implications of having this hideous disease. Uh, unbelievable, All right? So we have to get rid of that. The time. Wake up with Defo, joined by Luby. Welcome to the Defo Show. Very pleasant. Good morning, everybody. Great to be with you here on the Defo Show. Jeff DeForest, uh, Mike Luby Lubitz. Uh, is everybody going to be jabbing themselves uh, with... Uh, uh, various uh, forms of drugs uh, now. Uh, I mean, this Ozempic craze uh, is a little bit scary, isn't it, Luby? Where, uh, you know, so, some drug, and literally that disclaimer on Ozempic, which they're talking about taking it for what its original purpose was. And I guess what? Is that also a diabetes uh, related? Yes, or product? diabetes. Yes, it was for diabetes. Okay. So you're going to manage your diabetes by shooting yourself up with uh, Ozempic. But it turns out that a bunch of Hollywood stars lost a lot of weight, including uh, Oprah Winfrey. And uh, now everybody's running out. Uh, they all look like Jose Consenco, right? They take the field and they still have a syringe in their arms. Uh, it's amazing. They're trying to uh, lose weight in that fashion. There has to be something that is physically detrimental about uh, approaching weight loss in that fashion. Uh, isn't there? I mean, it's just long term. You don't know what it's doing. You're using. Look, what it does is it's an appetite inhibitor. OK, so it just makes you less hungry. OK, but what is it doing to your body to make you less hungry? It's doing something to your body. Yes. So Whatever it's doing is something that your body wasn't naturally doing. Okay, so that means it's unnatural. If it's unnatural, then there's going to be side effects to it. Now, how great are they? I don't know. How much you use it? I don't know, because that's the thing. It's supposed to be used small doses for short periods of time if you're not using it for diabetes. Yes. Did you relay on this to Shirley when she Shirley, was thinking yeah, about yeah. that? So that's yeah. the okay. thing is, if you she, she used it for a couple months, she really needed to lose weight at all but he's over she was fine i mean uh, she looked great yeah, if anything you would have thought she would have been jabbing you with this thing I didn't, uh, you were eating too much on the mayo lunchbox i mean i still <laughs> i just manage it um she i guess lost i don't know i think she looked great either way I, but she did it for a short period of time she should be yeah. fine now, the problem is some of these people you fall in love with the amount of weight you lose and you, you think of it as a weight maintenance thing it's not a weight maintenance thing it's no. for diabetes that's what it's fucking for if you use it for a quick boost to get yourself going into a routine, sure, fine, anything, even steroids can work if you do that. The problem is people fall in love with it and they're fucking lazy. So yeah. they, it's supposed to get you going with working out and eating right. You're not supposed to just rely on it for the next 30 years. Like it's not meant for long-term use for non-diabetes people. Like we don't know what it could do. Now, will it get, are you guaranteed to have something bad happen? No, maybe it doesn't ruin you and god willing i hope it doesn't yeah but we don't know the, the long-term side effects are not really proven in non-diabetes people so that's the problem i've been victimized a little bit by that syndrome there where, where a drug was uh, created to, to fight something and then it turned out it, it did something else of course viagra being, being that drug which uh, you couldn't help but fall in love with that i mean the first time that uh, you <laughs> fucked somebody on viagra it was like <laughs> and she looks at you like you're john holmes and you're thinking, geez, like just the other day, I couldn't even get it up. I mean, even uh, for masturbative uh, purposes, but um, uh, uh, unbelievable. No, that, 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 and, and right, the guy was trying to find uh, some kind of thing to help you with a heart condition. No, yes. it wasn't a heart condition. What was it? I, it was heart. It was, it yeah, was not for heart. heart and I guess you got aroused. You're like, oh. Imagine the, the, <laughs> the feeling of euphoria these chemists had when they looked and said, hey, you know what? My heart doesn't feel so good, but my dick is hard as a rock. <laughs> 
<laughs> Call Pfizer. I guess they were working for Pfizer at the time. Oh, well, what a windfall of capital that had to be. All drugs should be free just based on the profits that were probably generated by Viagra before they started having various forms of knockoffs there. And I don't know. Do you trust that or you have to have I don't the know. real thing? I haven't really dabbled in it yet. <laughs> I guess we'll they see. got these squirrely looking guys on TV telling you that you can get like 800 generic pills for like four bucks. There you go. No prescription needed. They happen to have a doctor online who will yeah. write you a prescription. Uh, who is that? Dr. Prince of Pana? I mean, say, speaking of Mexico. opening day, who the fuck is this doctor? <laughs> Sounds like it's out of Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> really? Where are we? Mexico City? I'm waiting for Jose Suleiman to come and exactly. give me permission to go ahead and use this shit. Unbelievable. All right. A great day on Tap and Sports. We have all kinds of activity, Luby. We've got controversy also going. Uh, I was just reading an article in the New York Post about how colleges are now petitioning states to no longer allow prop bets on their sporting activities, that the prop bets are, are really at the core of what is going to be the ruination of anybody's thought that anything is on the level in the world of sports. We've talked about this forever, Luby. It's the most basic and simplest of principles. If you believe the outcome is already predetermined, yeah, what's the point how of much interest are you going to have in a sport? Yeah, look, look, wrestling has a big following. I'll give it. Yes. It's not the same following as the NFL. It's not the same no. following as the NBA playoff. Like, it's not the same thing. And there's a reason. There's Well, okay. yeah, it's a bunch of Trump voters. I mean, that's what's uh, watching no, professional that's, wrestling. That's yeah. why he was such a big hit when he came out there and had like a chair thrown at his head. <laughs> it's okay, I, Look, it's not – we don't know the results all the time, so I'm sure there are upsets. But for the most part, you know, you have an idea of who's going to win those matches. In sports, you don't. Even when there's a heavy favorite, crazy shit happens. So yes. – that's what makes sports great. If you take that away, then it's just wrestling. And you, I presume, would lose a lot of fans. So, yes, they, they have to get this wrangled. I, again, I'm curious how many states are willing to do that. Because to me, I don't know if that eliminates the fugaziness, the improprieties, but I think it'd get it on. I, I don't know that you can totally eliminate it as long as you're taking action on it somewhere. And there, I, I do have, uh, I mean, I'll have to do a little research here real, real quickly here, Luby. But uh, there are states that have banned it already. And uh, who who is uh, the uh, force behind? Oh, it's the NCAA is uh, looking to make this happen. Yeah, and they still have, I guess, power, or they're pretending they have power. Well, I mean, uh, I guess that in, in this circumstance, the NCAA uh, could be a, a representative organization to try and uh, bring this uh, kind of thing about. Let's see, NCAA has been working uh, with states to deal with these threats. Uh, about uh, prop bets, and, and many are responding to banning college prop bets. Let's see what states have already uh, done it. New York is among the entities or the states that have banned player-specific prop bets. Wow, New York has done it That's on great. college sports, including the typical player point totals, assists, rebounds, and more. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and the other states that have done it already are Ohio, uh, Vermont, Maryland, and then uh, many others are uh, being petitioned to try and remove prop so bets. You can uh, pick a side. You can do. Over under, yeah. you can't do this. The ridiculous. They don't want Jonte Porter, uh, you know, having a. Uh, this is in the pros, but uh, they don't want some college kid having an opportunity to say, "Hey, uh, guess what? I'm not going to pass the ball tonight, so we'll go under on my total of uh, nine assists." And uh, sure enough, uh, the guy uh, hits the under. I, I mean, it's just it's just too easy, right? With everybody trying to figure out a way to beat the system, Luby. Yeah, but did they do it in in the pros? Because I, I, how many people are? Most people don't know individual players in college. Like, that's the interesting thing is, will they be willing to do in the pros? Because it feels like that's where the money's being made for DraftKings, you know, all these different outlets. On these that's where they're killing people. Look, yes. when you watch the proliferation of these gambling shows, that's all they talk about. Is yes. They don't really do sides. They'll have all the profits. Case, but it's all these fucked ridiculous, stupid ass. Uh, Jay Crowder's gun. Will he make over under th two threes? I'm like. I don't think he's played in a week. Like, I like I don't know what to do. It's with amazing. That. Yeah. The number's one and a half. Uh, Chet Holmgren, will he make more than one and a half three pointers in the ballgame? <laughs> okay. You're thinking you're going to watch an entire game here in the fourth quarter. The guy's made one three. And you're like, come on. And you're screaming, <laughs> shoot it, shoot it, you prick, shoot it. <laughs> Even if you break it, I don't give a shit. Well, we know it's tough enough to pick games, uh, the side against the spread. It, it, it's difficult to pick totals against the spread. Picking these prop bets can't, can't be easy, uh, especially if you're trying to pick like seven or eight of them in succession. Uh, unbelievable. But uh, they're trying to put a ban on that. The NCAA is uh, forwarding a movement to uh, try and get states, they're petitioning states to say, hey, listen, just, just leave this off the card. You'll help us solve one of our problems, which is uh, one of many I think that have arisen. 
I'm just curious if it'll cross over to the pros because it feels like the the network. Drop that elimination. I don't think it's going to happen, Luby. I'll tell you why. Because uh, FanDuel and DraftKings, uh, the two entities that seem to be ruling the universe right now, uh, the entire sporting world, mm -hmm. uh, they, they would be badly compromised if exactly. all of a sudden people stopped doing this. What do they do on these shows? What the fuck do you talk about? That's the whole goddamn show is going from sport to sport. Now that you'll have baseball, you'll have basketball. Yeah. Like you have hockey, you have, you'll have all these sports. You can do these ridiculous prop bets. They, they're going to be giddy with these fucking shows. If you get rid of them, what do you do? So that that's a problem. A lot of people be out of work. Yeah. They, they can't exactly. do this. Don't do it to us, man. We, we need yeah. to work. <laughs> and opening day, Major League Baseball, all around Major League Baseball. Uh, there were 15 games scheduled uh, for the 30 teams today. Uh, two of them got wiped out to postpone rain. Uh, the threat of inclement weather in New York uh, wiped out the Mets game. The Mets home opener has been postponed and be played tomorrow, uh, hopefully. And, and uh, I don't know which other game it was, but uh, two of the games were eliminated. So uh, you have 13 games in Major League Baseball today. You have the resumption of the NCAA men's tournament with the Sweet 16. We have a couple of plays from the professor that yes. we can relay to you, and he will join us tomorrow on our Degenerate Friday show. Mm -hmm. The professor who uh, fared very well. Uh, at the first day, the bracket, uh, the bracketology was, was a complete bloodbath. But uh, after that, things seemed to uh, go a little bit more according to form. A lot of favorites winning. Yep. Uh, interesting matchups tonight, although uh, mostly uh, fairly lofty point spreads to play into in yeah. these games. I think there were like two games that were relatively close in terms of the point spread. Uh, Illinois and Iowa State being one of them. That's a one and a half point spread. I think that's the smallest spread on the board. And uh, the professor likes Illinois in this game, which is a battle. I mean, this is one of those uh, raw truth battles. What's better? What wins championships, offense or defense, Luby? Yeah, yeah. We've been told that defense wins championships, which would indicate that Iowa State would be to play, laying one on a hook in this game. Illinois is a high-scoring team. Iowa State, one of the best defensive teams. Are they the best defensive team in college basketball? I know Iowa they're State. Two, top two or three, I thought. I don't know if they're number one or not. I don't know that much. Yeah, I'm not sure if they're at the top. Program. But a vaunted defensive uh, presence, uh, Iowa State. One and a half is the point spread there. Uh, four games on tap tonight. Arizona taking on Clemson. Can Clemson continue to Cinderella ride, Luby? What do you think? Cinderella ride and cover uh, seven and a hook against Arizona, or did they get blown out tonight? I was looking at some handicappers. There was a grid six guys on CBS Sports Line. All six say lay the seven points with Arizona in the game tonight. So uh, a lot of favoritism there. People think Arizona is going to be very good, has a shot to win the championship. Uh, UConn, interesting uh, rematch of last year's championship game. How similar are the two teams? Are they pretty close to what they looked like last year? UConn, or is San Diego State well, not as good? Right? It's not better, honestly. UConn, because remember, UConn started to pick it up and then went through the tournament and was just a buzzsaw. This year, they were great all year. Yeah. And have kept it going pretty solidly through the tournament. San Diego State's different. San Diego State is a five seed. They're They're okay. But they're not the scary team they were. That's yeah. why a lot of people lean strongly UConn. I don't know. San Diego State's good defensively, so I don't. I, I I would stay out of that. The Arizona Clemson game is the one game that, like all these games, Illinois, Iowa State, like all these games seem close to me. These are all teams that a lot of people have talked about that could make deep runs into the tournament. Clemson is not. <laughs> so I, I Arizona is the one team that I feel we've seen all the other quote unquote Cinderellas go away. All the teams that really shouldn't have been in the tournament go away. Clemson's like Clemson and NC state are the two last ones. And I sort of feel like this is where they, you know, get their comeuppance. Yeah. Um, uh, but Arizona, Clemson, especially because Arizona is a team that's playing really good and they have a lot of talent. And I, I just feel like that's the one game that I could see being lopsided. Arizona. Did your man Ricky Fowler, did he go to Clemson? Is that why he wears that oh, orange yeah. outfit? No, I, yeah. no, I don't know. That okay. Was, was Fowler. I thought it was fun. All right, so Clemson, yeah, and I don't know why. I have a distaste for Clemson, uh, both well, football I, and basketball. Uh, never mind uh, Dabo and all of that sanctimonious shit that he spews out the there. Uh, let's face it, he's kind of an asshole. Why don't you really get down to it? And Clemson basketball is scary. I, I called a couple of games from Clemson University when I was doing the UM basketball games. I think they played there twice uh, during the three years that I was doing it. And it, it's a weird place to go, that little John Coliseum. <laughs> very strange place to uh, go, especially if you have a bus full of black guys that are playing for the University of Miami. I mean, forget about it. So Clemson, uh, I'm going to root against them tonight. I don't know that they're going to lose by seven and a hook, uh, but I I'm thinking this Cinderella ride that they've been on. I, I didn't think they even belonged in the tournament, did you? They didn't. Yeah, well, yeah. That, look, they belong more than NC State, yeah. but it didn't feel like they were going to make a run. I know they struggled with UM. I know they, they FSU beat them. Like, 
they, I guess they played well down the stretch, but I didn't see them as a team that would do anything in the tournament. And I don't think, I think they're meeting their match today. All right. 13 major league baseball games opening day. Nice. And uh, four college basketball games tonight, four more tomorrow in the sweet 16. They pair it down to the elite eight after that. And then of course we'll have that conclusion over the weekend, end up with the final four and uh, the NCAA tournament uh, delivered a lot of thrills uh, in the first weekend. I, I thought it was sensational. Most of the action, uh, really spectacular, something for everybody. And uh, let's hope it uh, continues tonight. We did give you a winning hockey game yesterday. I thought that was impossible, didn't you, Louie? I mean, I read that very eloquent uh, position that was taken by that guy, LaBeouf, from uh, Action Sports, where he said, oh, no, Boston's really got it together. Go ahead and play him against the Lightning. Dude, hey, I mean, back-to-back Panthers-Lightning? Like, that's not – that's got to be – That's a tough back-to-back, huh? It's got to be insane. I mean, they're both playing really good hockey. I mean, the Panthers are as good as anyone in the sport this season, and the Lightning are as good as anyone in the sport the last decade-plus. Yeah, so uh, they ended up – it turned out to be a tougher call than, than we thought it was going to be, uh, but the Lightning ended up winning it 3-1. They might have even had an empty netter at the end of that game because they were up 2-1 late in the game. I did see that. I didn't watch uh, the uh, the uh, hockey game, but uh, it, it seemed like a really tough hill to climb, didn't it, for the Boston Bruins? Come into Miami, play a, a, an absolutely outstanding, tough, competitive game that they win late against the Panthers, then jump on a plane, go to Tampa – and I don't know if they were smoking cigars in Ybor City or what they were doing during the day, but you had to think that they were going to have a tough time against the Lightning, who were red hot uh, last night. And you were only laying 115 to win 100 with the Lightning on their home ice. So uh, that, that looked like a really good bet for us. So, so we're one for one on our hockey predictions so far this year. I think that's the first hockey game we've given out in the last several uh, centuries, Libby. <laughs> and we happen to be right about that. Holy Don Cherry. All right, we're going to have the uh, trivia challenge. And is that a blank screen that's supposed to be Dave Gurgles Gurgly or is froze. that uh, Dave Gurgles Gurgly? He just froze? All right. All right so we're going to take a break. We're going to dig up uh, Dave Gurgles Gurgly, and uh, we're going to be back uh, with the trivia challenge. You can dial us up if you want to play, 954-417-0070. Luby will be in a great spot tonight. Wow. How good is it going to be to be at Landlubbers? Oh, no. It's, I mean, what a workout perfect is. I think the game started with the 7 o'clock yeah. hour, so we'll get to finish and head home and catch the second halves of the first game. Um, but yeah, I mean, literally every, is there 50, there's over, I think there's over 50 TVs and Sufrine's a lunatic. So you've got all the baseball action. Is going to be taking the games, place. There he is. I think he's, he's good. Now. Oh, and there he is. All, all right. The teams from all the sports opening day, they, there's always one TV on horse racing. Because he's green. Land lovers is your place to go, especially if you're in the Northwestern part of Broward. I, we love shenanigans in the southeastern part, so we got to cover. Whether you're out east, you're out west, between shenanigans and land lovers, Patrick Utter and Alex Dufresne put their money literally where their mouth is. <laughs> <clears throat> They're both very similar in that regard. Oh, yes. uh, <laughs> there are a lot of great sports bars here in South Florida. There, there really are. There, there are many fine places that have really good food, good prices. Uh, pay attention to what's going on. You're not seeing like CNN or uh, you know some stock market crawl on uh, seven of the TVs, and you can't find a game somewhere. Oh, or you sure. ask a guy, "Hey, can you put the Pittsburgh game on?" He goes, eh, eh, "I don't know. Hey, Mo, do we get that Pittsburgh? Do we get that?" <laughs> no, they're they're right on top of it, man. Sufrin's climbing ladders, <laughs> rope ladders, to get up to the TV. TV screen so we can make sure that all the games are on. Uh, it, it's absolutely great, but uh, should be a lot of fun uh, for you tonight. And, and it is a great place. Uh, great food, great prices. Gurgles can attest to that. It's comms on its own. I've been out there like, uh, many, many times. Cool. You even got uh, Mayo and the uh, lovely Val to come sweet. out there. Last yeah, time. they had a blast too. It's a really yeah. good time. Six thirty, we start sunrise and and Pine Island and Plantation. If you want to join us. All right, and uh, that, that should be a lot of fun for Luby. And uh, we'll have the trivia challenge. You can dial us up and play and win a gift certificate to Land Lovers just yes. by dialing us up and playing at 954-417-0070. Gergs, how are you, my man? Are you okay? How, how are you feeling? Doing well. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, speaking of gambling bills, uh, I got a, a source in Tallahassee said that uh, Ron DeSantis is considering signing a bill where you cannot bet a parlay involving a men's team and a women's team because of gender differences. I don't know. <laughs> He's banning everything, which is good. I mean, uh, you know what? We should just get rid of everything. If you wanted to accomplish that, uh, just elect Ron DeSantis to be one of your public officials here. But uh, yeah, he's signing bills. I mean, he sees some uh, bum, uh, unfortunate homeless person uh, on, a, on a bench somewhere. He has him arrested immediately. Uh, you know, that's, I, I think that's progress, isn't it, in terms of understanding, uh, you know, this uh, sort of condition that 
uh, these poor people are having to deal with. Uh, you know, why well, not just take them all to jail? It's a good idea. He, he did. He did sign some bill now that'll help people get their homes back from squatters. Yes, who lived in their homes for months, which I I applaud him on that at least. But that uh, might have been one good thing he's done. But besides, I, I guess in the very beginning of his tenure as governor, actually, I was duped into thinking that this guy yeah, might. Yeah, he did with the water. That was wrong. Uh, yeah, yeah, he did the thing with the you know the green algae that was in the water, and he signed right. that. And I thought, wow, well, maybe he isn't such a schmuck. And then he turned out to be uh, an even bigger schmuck than we ever could have anticipated. Yes. Uh, all right, uh, trivia challenge. Dial us up nine five four four one seven zero zero seven zero nine five four four one seven zero zero seven zero. I think we'll also get some kind of an indication as to what Gurgles is going to do. In the Florida Derby, are, are oh, you yes, this weekend. in the town of yeah. Derby Horse? Uh, I, I, I'd have to relook. I have the past performances. I will double check maybe during one of our promo or one of our commercials. Um, but I, I had the form with me and I uh, did not look. I just did the early pick five. I've got. I'll be at Doc Reno's tournament Saturday. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. yeah, nice. yeah nice. at Plantation Preserve. So I'll be. I'll be there probably till one or two o'clock, and then rush out maybe after the stream after that. So we'll wait and see. A beat the broadcaster at the broadcaster's broadcaster tournament. tournament. Talk about the department. Oh of my god! Department. How perfect yeah. is that? Yeah. yeah. If you only did one tournament a year, then this would be the one to do. Then uh, Gurgle. So uh, we'll, we'll look forward fun. to uh, getting reports about uh, how, how much fun it was out there. Doc Reno, great guy, by the way. Yeah, so yeah. if you're in town and you have a chance to play in this thing, and, and you listen to the radio or TV at any time in your lifetime, yeah, you know, Doc. Uh, a lot of good people are going to be out there. So it uh, should be a heck of a lot of fun. All right, uh, we're going to come back with the uh, trivia challenge in a moment. Nine five four four one seven zero zero seven zero. We got Mike Luby Lubitz, Dave Gurgles, Gurgly. I'm Jeff DeForest, and uh, coming back with with the game. The real game in a moment. Now that. The time. It's 829. In style at Champions, the outstanding simulcasting room at beautiful Hylia Park. Yes, the grand old lady of thoroughbred racing has never been more vibrant. And you can wager on the races from the top tracks around the country while enjoying a cocktail at the Brass Rail Bar or any of the fine food served throughout the facility. If poker is your game, you're covered in style. And you can play all your favorite Vegas-style games, including blackjack, craps, and roulette in Hylia Park's sizzling hot casino. Get a player's card when you walk through the door for all kinds of generous amenities, including our favorite, free play. When you come out to the ultimate casino and entertainment destination, Hylia Park. These days, we're all looking for comfort anywhere we can find it. Thank goodness for Landlubbers, Raw Bar and Grill in the plantation because they are making sure you are as comfortable as possible. First of all, they're not only open for delivery and pickup. All you have to do is go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both pickup and free delivery. You're going to have the best wings in the world. You're going to have a great burger. You're going to have their amazing soups. Again, Landlubbers, Raw Bar, and Grill. It's nice and easy. Just go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both your pickup and free delivery. Thank goodness for Landlubbers for making you always feel right at home. Are you looking to buy your first home? Have you been turned down for a loan? Do you need to refinance or get money out of your home? Call Michael Kodzi, CEO of Choice Mortgage. He's been helping the South Florida community get mortgages for 30 years. Hi, this is Michael Kotze, CEO of Choice Mortgage. We have the most competitive fixed rates in the market. Call me 24-7, 561-441-2730. And remember, I don't just work banking hours. To make the right choice for your home, call Choice Mortgage today. Oh, solo volante will be coming late. Oh, solo volante, the Belmont's now a mile and an eight. The finish line is coming up quick. Luca Panici just switched the stick. The only way to get your morning started is with Depo, <clears throat> joined by Luby, right here on the Depot Show. Welcome back to the show. Uh, good to have you guys with us. About to get the game underway. The big game. I mean, you could have the opening day in Major League Baseball. You could have the NCAA tournament coming back with the beginning of the Sweet 16, the uh, first of the eight games, uh, the first four getting underway tonight. But uh, the real game in town is the Trivia Challenge with Dave Gargles Gargley. It, it always has been, always will be. That was a Polly Man, of course. Well, what a brilliant singing voice the Polly Man had. He sure does. Is that kind of like a Jim Neighbors thing? Although he didn't have like a, you know, a screwy voice. Uh, he, he had a very distinguished voice uh, in his regular speaking uh, patterns. But uh, when he sang, 
What was it not a, a whole different guy? It was like Mel Tillis. Uh, I mean, just unbelievable. Where, where you can't believe the guy can sing, and yet uh, when he just speaks regularly, he can't uh, utter a couple of words without without stumbling over him. Unfortunately. All right. Uh, yeah, that's two people. You think of Mel Tillis and uh, and Jim Neighbors and and, and the Pauly Man. Yeah, that would be the logical, you know, if it was items in a series, you know, on the SATs, uh, Jim Neighbors, Mel Tillis, and everybody circles or puts that big, you know, they get the pencil in the circle there, puts the poly man down as their choice. So the answer is A. All right, here we go. Into the game uh, for the Land Lovers Gift Certificate, 954-417-0070. You guys uh, know the rules. Uh, I don't know that we need to repeat them here. And uh, Gurgles is going to fire off a series of questions. And we're going to begin in the traditional fashion with Dave Gurgles Gurgly uh, as the poly man, honoring the poly man in some. Easy baseball. This pitcher on being behind 14 runs after the first inning said, wow. Last time I saw anything like this, I was playing for Tasty Freeze in the Little League. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? Smith, Yamamoto uh, from the Dodgers? Could have been. Uh, Dave Smith, Bubba Smith, Herb Smith, or Smith and Walensky? It is uh, Mike Louie Lewitz with a random phone scrambler to select our first player. A lot of phones flashing, and it lands on Ron. Ron, you're on the Trivia Challenge. Good morning, Ron. Good morning, guys. I'm going to go with A. Correct the mundo, my friend. Uh, you have one Hold point on, off to a hot start. Baseball, Ron, true or false? Bartolo Colon faced 12,219 batters during his career, and only 29 of them were heavier than him. Wow. True or false? I, I started laughing. I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> that may be real. <laughs> that's got to be false. That can't be true. False. No, that's false. true. That's true. Did you see Colon? <laughs> all 29- where, where did you get this from, Elias? All 29, believe it or not, were the same person, Dimitri Young. Oh, it's a no. Oh, trick question, Dave Gurgles Gurgly. <laughs> That's a no. <laughs> there was a prop bet on Bartolo Colon. Uh, how many families did he have? And the answer was one and a hook, <laughs> the over-under. And uh, everybody had the over was right. I mean, how, how did this guy get away with that? In New York City, a secret family. Living in the next borough. That that, that was yeah, I mean, pretty incredible. All the time. I guess he, if anyone could, it would be him. It's hard enough to juggle two chicks that you're oh, only no, having a true. casual relationship with, much less uh, two complete families. That that's it. Wow. While playing Major League Baseball and living in New York City and being very much in the spotlight because uh, you weigh 400 pounds. Wow. All right. Uh, one for two going for four here. All right. Baseball. Speaking of baseball, we got opening day coming up. Who has recorded the most opening day RBIs during Good his question. career? There you go. Is that Joe Torrey, Adam Dunn, Albert Pujols, or Stan Musial? Hmm. Mm. Let's go Adam Dunn. Least likely. Well done, there you go. Right. Very nice. Yep. You would figure it uh, would have been one of the last two there that, uh, you know, guys that played the game forever. I guess Torrey uh, could have been it also. But uh, Adam Dunn, as soon as you said Dunn among those four, I thought that had to be the one, right? All right, very good. Four going for nine here, Ron. Some sharp players already. All right, we'll switch to uh, – March Madness, which city hosted the most NCAA Division I championship games in the 20th century? Okay. Kansas City, Houston, Jacksonville, or Indianapolis? Oh. Let's go Kansas City. KC. Yes. That's right. Oh, my well God. Done. I'm like last on good my total. list. Are you kidding me? Would the Omaha Kings come back there? Uh, all right, very good run. Uh, Flash is right out of the shoot there with a nine spot. Uh, it's going to put some pressure on the rest of the players here. 954-417-0070. 954-417-0070. Did you get excited for uh, Philadelphia opening days? Did, did you go to any Phillies opening days when you were living uh, as a kid in uh, Pennsylvania? Uh, I never went opening days, no, but I went, uh, I mean, I go as far back as going to uh, Connie Mack Stadium back in the oh, wow. 60s. Never got there on opening day, but Connie Mack Stadium, like a lot of places, probably in New York, you had to pay somebody to watch your car while you were inside. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was quite a place. Richie and Ashburn I was at, uh, I was leading at, off? I was, though. That's right, opening day. I was at the first game ever at Veterans Stadium. Oh, yeah? Where the Phillies played, yep. And then since torn down, yeah. Um, they played the Montreal Expos. The Philadelphia fans booed everybody except the Expos GM who came in from right field on a dog sled on the Astros. <laughs> That's the only one they cheered. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're ready for our next set of questions. Round, round with nine points, uh, setting the pace here, trivia challenge. And uh, you can dial us up, 954-417-0070. Here's Dave Gurgles-Gurkley with round number two of the trivia challenge. All right, Olympics. 
This Canadian prime minister of sports, after writing on the luge, said, wow, that's what I call the ultimate laxative. What's that? <laughs> Otto Jelinek, Otto Graham, Jimmy Graham, or Graham McDowell? And here's a scrambler. Select our next player. Uh, this ought to be interesting. Uh, and it's at a time where it's uh, very precarious uh, to uh, select the proper interpreter. But I believe we have Andy with his uh, Hebrew interpreter. Andy, welcome to the uh, Trivia Challenge. Yes, yeah, shalom. I have my Yiddish interpreter to do the uh, the game today for me. Okay, very good, sir. Uh, be more comprehensible for the listeners out there. And if you were- my guy, my guy got me a twelve percent return. He wouldn't lose four and a half million dollars. <laughs> so I can get a Yiddish interpreter and not a Japanese interpreter. Well, I mean, it depends on the situation. Uh, so it would be appropriate in your case. Uh, you have one point, and you're going for for two. All right, Mazel Tov, Andy. All right, here we go. Baseball. After the movie, Lou about Lou Gehrig, the pride of the Yankees, debuted in the theaters. The Yankees went on a nine-game winning streak. True or false? True. True. No. No? no they lost the next day? That, <laughs> <laughs> that was a tearjerker, man, oh, well, prior to the Yankees. It was. Sorry, it really was. Said, my interpreter said the question is, Dave Gurgley is very handsome. <laughs> That's yeah, yeah. That'd be false. Yeah. That's what we got in here. He was like one of those Spanish interpreters in the corner on the HBO fights. Uh, yeah, he say uh, it's uh, very nice to be in this competition. Yeah. Meanwhile, he said I was going to kill you and your children. Uh, all right. Uh, you have uh, what? He, he missed that one, right? Yep. He has one. He's going one going for four. Here we go. All right, Andy. I know you're a Florida Derby fan. Which of the following Florida Derby winners went on to win both the Preakness and the Belmont? But not the Derby. Mm. Needles, Swale, Tis the Law, or Nashua? Nashua. That's right. Yes. Right. Wow. Yes. Nashua won the Preakness in the Belmont, and that was 1955. The Derby was won by, as a matter of fact. Well Very done. Nice. Yeah, you can tie Ron here. Andy and his interpreter right there in the hunt there. Four, four yeah. going for nine. I bet him on the Derby. Here we go. I bet him on the Derby. All right. Uh, Baseball, Andy, who was the last player to have an extra base hit in 14 consecutive games? Oh, God. Wow. Was that Craig Biggio, Wade Boggs, Chipper Jones, or Chase Utley? Was it the last player you said? Yeah, the most recent. The to have a, most recent, most recent. Extra base hit in 14 most consecutive recent. games. What's that? It was Biggio, Utley... Oh, uh, here, I'll give them to you. Greg Biggio, Wade Boggs, Chipper Jones, or Chase Utley? I'll go with Utley. That's what I would have said. Utley. Yeah, uh, Boggs or Utley are within my two choices. Chipper Neither. Jones. Right? Chipper. Oh. 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 Uh, all right, I'm in second. Mm, I'm in yes, you're hanging second. around. Just hanging you're right around. there, uh, Andy. You're knocking on the door here, so uh, keep your interpreter uh, standing by, and uh, we may have you in the finals. Uh, 954-417-0070 if you want to play the game. 954-417-0070. It's a trivia challenge here with Dave Gurgles Gurgly here on the Defo Show, along with one Michael Luby Lubitz, who's at the controls. Gurgles, I know you're always in control, and whenever you – it's so great because I know what you're going to do. As soon as I hear you screaming, come on with that five, come on with that five, when the five crosses a wire in front, you're going to go right outside and line up a Perdomo cigar. Yes, I lit one up yesterday. They had uh, – there I am at the Maldives, yeah. and you don't have to go to the Maldives. You can go to 51. 50 Northwest 167th Street. I'll be there tomorrow to see Nick. I'll pick up maybe a couple of lot 23s for the, for the weekend. Um, and you can go there Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Call them if you need to, 305-627-6700. Saturday, Sunday, you want to go? Go online, www.perdomocigars.com to find a retailer near you that sells these great cigars. So maybe Easter Sunday, you're going to have a great meal. Then go out in the Florida room or out in the backyard because the weather is going to be great on Easter and smoke a beautiful Perdomo cigar. So this weekend, when you get to the Florida Derby, my choice will be a four-horse box. Nine, the Conquest Warrior, who may be the favorite, boxing with, a, with some bombs. Eight. Uh, Seminole Chief, the four, the, the four Grand Mo, and the one uh, Frankie. That's a, those are some bombs. So I would be boxing one four eight nine. If you take a look at that, nineteen forty eight, that works out to the year that Citation won the Triple Crown as well. So 
this weekend, no matter what you're doing, put something great in your mouth with a cigar from Pernobo Cigars. All right. The continuation of the game and the conclusion of the game is right around the corner here. So stick around. We'll be back with more in a moment on the Trivia Challenge. Now that. The time. Thank you, Johnny. It's uh, 842. Hey, folks. Tony Segreto here. Let me ask you a question. What do you look for when you go out to eat? Good food, obviously. Friendly atmosphere. Not too loud, but good energy. Reasonable prices. And a place where you feel comfortable. All those ingredients, no pun meant there, are hard to find unless you're talking about the Texas Roadhouse. You see, they encompass all of those attributes. Really, really good food, amazing atmosphere, good for a family, good for a date, or just a night out for yourself, and prices that will make you extremely happy. Their ribs unmatched, steaks hand cut every day, everything, and I mean everything is made on site, including their incredible bread. It's the one day, folks, that you can forget about low carb diets. Trust me when I tell you, Texas Roadhouse, your restaurant, your destination, when you say, where should we go and eat tonight? From the newly renovated sports bar to the beautiful bayside views captured at the Tiki Bar, Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill has it all. Located at mile marker 104, the Big Chill also offers waterfront dining while experiencing breathtaking sunset views of the Florida Keys. It's simply the hottest spot in the Keys to cool off. That's Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill at mile marker 104 in Key Largo. For more information, call today at 305-453-9066. This comes from the great Defoe Lama. It's the bets you don't make, the chances you don't take, that can compromise an otherwise incredible life, my friend. The only way to get your morning started is with Defoe, joined by Luby, right here on The Defoe Show. Welcome back to the show. Good to have you guys with us here on this fine Thursday. Tomorrow, Degenerate Friday edition. We'll have the professor with us. Uh, he'll have a big board and, of course, some selections on the second round of Sweet 16 games that uh, gets underway on Friday night. Going to be a, a big-time weekend of college basketball, Major League Baseball opening up. What more could you ask for? you got the Miami Open, sensational action here in town on the tennis circuit. Uh, it's all coming together uh, Gurgles and Luby, uh, it really is uh, the the conundrum of great events that, that take place uh, in the spring. Spring or fall, which is better in your opinion uh, to be a sports fan? Are they both uh, equally enjoyable? Well, I think, you know, be, being that the number one sport for everybody seems to be football. Yeah, I'll be the fall. I guess but, you got to uh, throw a little football in there. Uh, yeah, I don't know if we got this new thing that The Rock has fused together there with the XFL and the USFL. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. I, it's good. I, I I like the fact that there's an opportunity for guys that were like fringe players uh, in the NFL sure. to at least get a shot to perpetuate uh, and continue their career and uh, maybe have a chance to make the big money uh, later on. All right. Uh, continuing the game here. Dial us up if you want to play. 954-417-0070. Uh, leaderboard is uh, it's one of those log jams atop the leaderboard with all illustrious names here. Big Jack, Arnie. We got uh, Ron with nine and uh, Andy and his interpreter with four. So uh, wide open to get to the finals as well. Here's Dave Gurgles Gurgley, our next set of questions. Now let's go back in Miami Heat history. This former Miami Heat player, after a tough loss, talking to reporters, did his best Norm Crosby impersonation when he said, I don't want to shoot my mouth in my foot, but those are games we can win. <laughs> Sherman Douglas, Renee Douglas, Douglas MacArthur, or MacArthur Derry. All right. Uh, could have been the general. Let's see. Here's the scrambler. And and look at this. We have Lenny the Chronic. Lenny, how are you, my friend? Hey, I'm good. How you doing, guys? Doing all good right, Lenny. Man. Good morning, Lenny. Lenny, on top of this game. Congratulations on your uh, out of the money finish last Thursday. I was glad to help. All right, at Landlubbers. Yeah, you coming for the table tonight? Uh, I I don't know if I'll make it tonight because I want to give you guys a chance to win. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, All right, one point question. Uh, one point, and uh, here we go. For, for true, false, base, for one. Baseball, Lenny. Longtime Red Sox fan Ben Affleck is actually a bit of a jinx. Since the debut of his film, Goodwill Hunting, in 1997, the Red Sox have lost 18 straight games on his birthday. Wow. True or false? Wow, that's, a, that's a good one, but I'm going to say false. True. Oh, that's true. true. Yeah, that sounds wow. like 2014. Wow. They lost 18 mm -hmm. straight, 97 to 2014. When's his birthday? I want to. I want to continue. August that trend. 15th. August 15th. Okay. Go against the Sox on August 15th. It's a lock. 14 okay. straight years. Uh, all right. Uh, very good. Uh, one going for four here, Lenny. All right, Lenny. Um, let's give. I know you're a big horse racing fan. Let's give you a Florida Derby question. Although the Florida Derby began in 1952, as we know it. 
between 1926 and 1937, this stakes was then called the Florida Derby. All which right. one was it? The Man of War, the Flamingo Stakes, the Hutchinson Stakes, or the Hialeah Park Championship? Wow. Let's go with the Flamingo Stakes. Flamingo, That's right. yes. Yep, for 11 years it was known as the Flamingo Stake, the Florida Derby back then. Yep. Wow, I like it as the Flamingo. I really do. Time for a change. The year that he won, Dr. Carter, and uh, who, who was the uh, Woody Stevens horse that uh, everybody thought was uh, un unbeatable uh, that year? Oh, uh, oh, Swale, Conquistador Cielo, I forget. Oh, no, this, uh, this uh, preceded that. Uh, oh, way and, back. Everybody was touting this horse uh, as a two-year-old. They came out there. There was some, uh, you know, bizarre circumstances with an injury. Devil's Bag, that was the horse. Oh, ah, okay, yep. Uh, I can still hear Durkin saying, and Devil's Bag is defeated today. Uh, remember uh, Joe Tannenbaum, the sure. uh, publicist? Yeah. Uh, he, he was like the czar racing yeah. down here for many, many years. Yeah, he, he's in that old uh, broken-down press box that they had at the time at uh, – Highly a park. I don't know if it was broken down, but it was fragile. Let's say more fragile even than, uh, unfortunately, this bridge turned out to be in Baltimore. And uh, Tannenbaum had a son, uh, David, and they were all over uh, time for a change. They, they, they nailed this exact. That Dr. Carter, I think, ended up second in the race, and Devil's Bag was out of it. And in celebration, I don't know if it was a Perdomo. I don't, I don't want to say that it was because uh, what happened could have been catastrophic. David Tannenbaum lights up a cigar. Turns out uh, he dropped some of the lit ashes in a waste paper basket that was in the uh, press box at the time. And, and you know that this was like balsa wood, I mean, kindling yeah. the, uh, the uh, you know, composition of the press box. And uh, the smoke is billowing out the window while these two guys are dancing up and down because they hit like a bunch of uh, uh, big exotics uh, with, with uh, time for a change and no devil's bag in there. And, and I, I thought I was going to die, man. I, I grabbed a fire extinguisher and put the thing out and uh, but we all survived. So, so it was great. My one heroic gesture there. I think I might have had a winning ticket in that waste paper basket, and I was afraid. That <laughs> That's why you did it. Yeah, you smoke. didn't, you didn't yeah. care about saving lives. Yeah. All right. Uh, five point question coming up here for for right, Lenny Chronic. Final four for March Madness. Who was the first number eleven seed to make the final four? Was that LSU, George Mason, VCU, or Loyola of Chicago? Let me think. I'm going to say George Mason. George Mason. They were the second one. The first one, go back to 1986, LSU. Oh. Oh. Wow. All right. That nice eliminates job. Lenny from the competition. Makes it real easy for you, Louie. Yep. Yep, yep. We're going to square off uh, Ron and Andy. Yep. Yep. And All right. Andy, Andy and his uh, interpreter. So uh, we'll do that. Uh, one more quick word about uh, Perdomo Cigars while Louie puts the finals together. Yeah, and once again, we'll uh, those the, are the four horse, the four horse box in the Florida Derby, one four eight nine. When you get there, um, right. but you don't need to go to the Florida Derby to enjoy a Perdomo cigar. You come right here to Miami Lakes Golf Club. We sell them right in our pro shop. We sell them on the beverage cart. I'll be enjoying one Saturday morning at uh, Plantation Preserve, raising money for Doc Reno's uh, charity in the Broadcaster uh, Golf Tournament, and you can get one easily. Three oh five. 627-6700, the number to call, and go there in person, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. They're open right now, well, just about, another hour, at 5150 Northwest 167th Street. See Nick, Nick Jr. They're in their fourth generation of Perdomo cigar makers, and they make them perfect one at a time. So today, tomorrow, whatever it might be, put something great in your mouth with a cigar from Perdomo Cigars. Do we know who's going to be in there uh, representing the broadcasters in this tournament? Do we have any I don't. Ideas? I don't. I haven't seen a list of names. I know they're really – they had 80. Now they're up to 120 golfers. Wow. Which is a terrific job by a young lady named Doris Muscarella who helps organize these tournaments. And I know Monday they had the uh, Florida Derby tournament at uh, Plantation. I was invited to do that one, but I was at uh, Grand Oaks, the former home of Caddyshack, doing one for the Dan Marino Foundation for autism. So very good. Keep busy. Yep. You're a busy man, Gurgles. I mean, do, do you ever have to, uh, you know, scratch because of a sore arm or anything? Are you, you're hitting like I a did. thousand I, uh, I had one tournament. I arrived. I hit a couple of practice balls. My back just didn't, wouldn't take it. So I had to leave. Unfortunately, I still gave them the prizes. Um, and I was able to make the double that day anyway. So, oh, uh, yeah. I mean, you're a veritable <laughs> friendly couple. So, I mean, uh, with the amount of golf balls that you've hit uh, and its impact, uh, we, uh, you know, we really admire uh, what you've been doing, raising all of this money for charity, and of course uh, for your uh, 
Uh, I mean, maybe a little piece goes to the uh, ponies, uh, I would think. The Saratoga Fund. Yes, I'll be there August 15th, through, August 15th through 18th. Yep. Saratoga Foundation. All right, here we go. Ready for the finals. Here's the way it works. Uh, Gurgle's going to fire off a question. Call out your name if you'd like to answer right away. Nobody answers right away. We offer multiple choice. The first person to call out his name gets first choice. We go back and forth until we have a winner for the championship of today's edition of the Trivia Challenge. Here is the great Dave Gurgles Gurgling. All right, let's take you back to a classic baseball movie. In the 1976 film, The Bad News Bears, who can forget Mr. Butterworth, the pool cleaner? Tatum O'Neill played the plucky pitcher Amanda Wurlitzer. She was the star pitcher for the team. But who was originally cast in that part but turned it down? Oh, I thought it was the guy who was her, who was her father. No, no, no. Oh, he no. just checked out recently, Ryan O'Neill. Shaquille uh, O'Neill's her father, isn't it? Oh, no. Shaq, right, anyway. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who was originally cast in that part? A, Tatum O'Neill. This is a trick question. Yeah. B, Susan Olsen. C, Valerie Bertinelli, or D, Jody Foster. Lewis says, Ron better know this. Anybody? Uh, uh, somebody chimed in with something Maybe there. Maybe you'll be answer Ron's Ron. name first, which is how the rules go. Uh, so Ron, Ron. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Lenny, uh, Lenny blew it? It's not Lenny. Well, you, you, it's Ron. Oh, 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 Andy, Andy. Yeah. Andy just yelled. Oh, Andy. Ron, you're first. The rules. Yes, Ron Who's does. First? Ron's first. Ron, what is your answer? Ron, what's your answer? Are you going to go with? Go with C. Jody Foster. Foster. Correct. Wow. Yeah, that's right. Jody Foster turned down the role. Good you job. Know why, Ron? Dumbass. No, she <laughs> it, it, turned is, down the role to star it, it, in Taxi Driver. Congratulations, Ron. Is Andy eliminated, uh, or, or does he get a reprieve because his interpreter was the one that actually shouted out to C? Yeah. And it wasn't actually he him? He explained the roles. And he is Valerie Bertinelli anyway. He had the wrong answer. Yeah, so yeah. he was even right. <laughs> <laughs> a controversial finish. I mean, this was like the Clipper 76ers game where, where the guy gets uh, hit in the head with a sledgehammer and there's no call. <laughs> Wasn't that controversial? <laughs> Nick Nurse, I mean, he, he was out of his mind last night, this guy. He got screwed uh, twice. Uh, first, uh, with about eight seconds ago, Max, he's driving in a basket. He looks like he got fouled. No call there. They give him the ball out of bounds. They say he wasn't in the act of shooting, even though he was falling on his face uh, at the time after trying to heave the ball to the basket. And, and then uh, they come right back down the uh, court there, and they, they screw him over again. It was amazing. Uh, always great, too, to have the officials, uh, like moments after the game, say, hey, you know what? Even though we were all looking at that, we completely blew it. And, and you're thinking, uh, you know, I had Philadelphia on the money line. Uh, when am I going to get some retribution here? Uh, Gurgle's always a pleasure, man. You have some fun. Uh, it sounds like you're going to be busy all weekend long. And uh, yeah, we're, we're... Doc. We love Doc. Yeah, and say hello to Doc Reno for us. You, people always ask me about you and Paulie and how you're both doing. And I'd say they should be doing 5 to 10, but they're doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have enough time left to do 5 to 10. That's the problem. I mean, maybe the 5. All right, Gurgles, thanks for being with us. Uh, everybody, thanks for tuning in today. Uh, we'll do it again tomorrow. We'll have a Degenerate Friday. It should be a lot of fun. A professor will help us handicap those yes. uh, remaining four games of the Sweet 16 round yep. in the NCAA tournament. We'll have uh, all kinds of Major League Baseball to talk about uh, as well on the program if you get into that. But uh, we know that uh, in Miami, nobody cares. Over or under, Luby, I'll give you another shot at this. Attendance, Marlins opening day. You think they're going to paper the house with a bunch of kids? Yeah, I'm not going to be an official sellout, but they'll have 30,000 or more. They always do. Okay. Tomorrow, I have no idea. I mean, they'll be lucky if they get 18. Uh, they will list the attendance or post the attendance tomorrow at uh, 13,576, yeah. and there will be 3,000 people in the ballpark, if that. Although uh, tomorrow, what? It would be a Friday night game in all likelihood. Yeah, they'll so, have 18 something thousand. Yeah. I mean, it's the first weekend series. They just won't approach sellout status. Today, they probably will. It's this will there. be the ceiling for the uh, season, uh, whatever yes. they do. Oh, today. Yeah, this yeah, will yeah. be the highest good. attended game, unless they're in a the World Series. Uh, that'll It'll be, be it. Be a rough Under se well, we had it at 79. Under 79. I'm going to use that oh, as yeah. the official number. It, it lowered itself to uh, 78. I think they're going to be 75 or less, so it doesn't matter what the fuck the number is. I, don't I, I believe that they will. That, that, that's another good question. I mean, if you uh, were looking at things to consider going into this Marlin season, will, will Louis Arise be a Marlin at the end of the year? No, no. They would have traded him already if they got a decent offer. They're trying to reset everything. Yeah. Which Did you know. see who made the opening day roster? Okay. Your man, Sixto Sanchez. Oh, yeah. Suppose Sarney actually brought up his name, and I'm like, outside of us, no one's brought up that name in three fucking in five years, years, yeah. Magically healthy now. I'm like, okay, we'll see. 
See what happens there. Uh, seemed to be badly compromised from where they were at last year when they made the postseason. Had a pretty exciting year all the way around, and they bagged the general manager after one of their, I mean, more entertaining seasons uh, where they were winning all these one-run games. I, I, I just think the, the one-run games, uh, a lot of them boil down to luck. Yeah, 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 and then that's and, and, and I think that luck will reverse this year, where they nope. were sensational in these spots last year. Right? If it even just goes to an average number, then then they're fucked. So uh, we'll see what happens. Skip Schumacher, uh, manager of the year. The, the guy was uh, really brilliant last sure, year. But they gave him nothing. I mean, yeah. there's only so much you can do with what they're giving him. Nothing. Yeah, absolutely nothing. And uh, John Birdie, very popular Marlin, traded yeah. before the season started. Uh, literally, he, he got a giant headline in the New York Post. They're all happy about the fact that he's he now a Yankee. Yeah. Uh, last but, year, he started for the Marlins for most of the year. He was a big he, right. he was big for them. He was uh, batting uh, at or near 300 all season for the most part. I don't know what he finished at. It might have been in the 280s, but uh, he was steady. He surprised me because he just doesn't look like uh, physically he, he's going to you know stand up. Uh, plus, useful in so many ways, can play all these different positions. Yep. And he's solid in every position. He Big doesn't... base stealer. I mean, uh, among the leaders in, in base, uh, base is stolen uh, during the course of a season uh, if he plays regularly. So, uh, yeah, let's let's get rid of anybody who did any good and uh, from last year's team. We'll, we'll see what happens. All right, uh, so good luck, everybody. I hope you enjoy it. If you're going Thanks, out there for opening day, have a hot dog and a beer for us. And go. we'll see you tomorrow on the next edition of the Depot Show. For Mike Luby Lubitsch, Dave Gurgles Gurgly, I'm Jeff DeForest. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We will see you next time as we leave you now that. The time. It is 8.58. Let's go to eat a damn snack. Look at the damn to my